Hello fellow coffee brotherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this short video I'm going to be talking about the dual wall baskets and the standard baskets that come with the Sage Bambino Plus. Basically the dual wall baskets are Sage's answer to pressurised baskets. You'll normally find that lower end domestic espresso machines come with pressurised baskets and sort of entry level home barista machines tend to come with both pressurized baskets and standard baskets. Standard baskets are for using with a grinder that's capable of espresso grind and pressurized baskets are meant for using with pre-ground coffee or for using with a grinder that doesn't quite go fine enough for espresso. And the dual wall basket is Sage's answer to the pressurized basket. They just do it in a slightly different way. I strongly believe that you should stick to the standard baskets, use the pressured baskets as a little indoor lockdown sport and frisbee them and keep hold of the standard baskets and use a grinder capable of grinding fine enough for espresso. And by the way, the Sage Bambino Plus used to come only with dual wall baskets and you had to buy the standard basket separate. But I've now been informed by Sage that the newer units, the newest stock comes with the standard baskets as well as the dual wall baskets. In terms of which grinders or which budget or lower cost grinders work well with the Sage Bambino Plus, see coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash grinders because I've written a post there about all the various different grinders that would work with standard baskets using an espresso machine such as the Bambino Plus. In the original video, I was quite critical of the dual wall baskets saying that they just don't seem to do what they're supposed to do. They just don't seem to enable you to work with pre-ground coffee or to work with slightly coarser ground coffee. But Sage pointed out to me when I spoke to them after doing the review that I was only using one coffee or one kind of coffee during the review using the dual wall baskets and that that was a lighter, light to mid roast coffee bean and that the dual wall baskets tend to do better with a darker roast coffee and that if I try it with a darker roast coffee I should have better results. Also someone said to me in the comments that I was paying too much attention to the flow rate and that when using pressured baskets because I wouldn't normally use pressured baskets so I'm not experienced with them that when using pressured baskets or in this case the dual wall basket that flow rate sort of goes out of the window and it doesn't matter you've just got to go by taste. So I thought I'd do another short video using both pre-ground and whole bean coffee that Blue Coffee Box have kindly sent to me. And you can read what I think of Blue Coffee Box, by the way. If you go to coffeebob.co.uk, you'll see that I've reviewed the Blue Coffee Box subscription. And they've kindly sent me a bag of the same darker roast beans, both pre-ground and whole bean. So I'm gonna try the same coffee, exactly the same coffee, pre-ground via the dual wall basket, and I'm going to grind on the Sage Smart Grinder Pro using, you know, via the uh, standard baskets, and I'll compare the taste. I'll do it purely on taste. I won't go off the flow rate, and we'll see what I then think of the ability of the dual wall basket. So let's do that. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to pull a shot using pre-ground coffee via the dual wall basket first, and then I'm going to pull a shot using coffee that I'm going to grind in the Sage Smart Grinder Pro, and I'm going to make a Lungo or Americano with the exact same amount of hot water with both, and I'm going to taste them and see whether there's much difference in between the two with the exact same coffee. So this is what we're using from Blue Coffee Box. And as you can see, they're both exactly the same coffees, but one of them is ground and one of them is pre-ground because Blue Coffee Box give you the option when you sign up for their coffee subscription to have either pre-ground or whole bean. So they very kindly sent me one pre-ground and one whole bean of the exact same coffee. And this is what we're going to be using for this test. Okay, so we've got the pre-ground coffee. We've got about 19 grams and I've used the Sage razor tool and I will use the razor tool as well for the coffee that I will grind for the, uh, the whole bean coffee that I'm going to grind using the Sage Smart Grinder Pro to make it as fair as possible. I've tamped, I've used a razor tool, 
I've got my scales, which are the Brewista Smart Scale 2, by the way. And I'm going to pull the shot manually. And if you've seen my previous video on pulling the shot manually, you'll see that you just press and hold the shot button for as long as you want pre-infusion to last. And then take your finger off, the pressure will ramp up and the shot will start pouring. When you've finished pulling the shot, you just press the flashing shot button. Again, it'll stop. So let's do that. I'm going to aim to stop it at 38 grams if I can, which is doubling up from 19 grams of ground coffee or of pre-ground coffee. In terms of flow rate, if we were going off flow rate, that would appear to be far too quick. But as I said, we're not going to take flow rate into account. We're just going to do by taste. So that is with pre-ground. Let's let it settle so you can see the crema. That's pre-ground. The beauty of grinding yourself, <laughs> the beauty of grinding beans yourself with a capable espresso grinder like the Sage Smart Grinder Pro is that you can tweak it so you can try it and then if it's not correct if it's too quick or if it's too slow so if you're too coarse or too fine you can adjust accordingly obviously you can't do that with pre-ground coffee but when you're grinding yourself you can do what's called dialing in you can dial in and get the perfect or as close as possible to the perfect extraction from the coffee you're working with so i've done it once i tried it uh, just at what it was set at which I think was 16 and it was way too quick it still didn't come out quite as quickly as it did with the pre-ground and the even at 16 it was quite a bit finer than the pre-ground coffee and what you'll find with most roasters and most coffee suppliers is that the pre-ground it has to be one size fits all so you know they'll sell an espresso ground but they'll, they'll only have one espresso ground coffee they won't have one espresso ground for the sage bambino plus and another one for another machine they have to have one you know espresso grind and they have to err on the side of caution they have to err on the coarser side because if they go for a finer setting on some machines, it'll choke the machine. You won't get any espresso out. And that'll lead to people complaining and asking for their money back because they can't actually create espresso from the beans that they bought or from the ground coffee that they bought. But going coarser, you're ensuring that everyone is gonna be able to get espresso from the ground beans, but the majority of people are gonna end up getting under extracted coffee from the pre-ground beans because with most machines, that espresso pre-ground espresso grind size is going to be too coarse for most espresso machines that's the issue with pre-ground so hopefully now this will give me the one to two extraction in around 28 to 32 seconds which is what i'm aiming for now you can see that at grind size 11 i've choked the machine this is what happens when dialing in. You have to get the grind right, and I've gone too fine with the Sage Smart Grinder Pro. You can get very fine on this machine, on this grinder, and I've gone far too fine. So it's just dripping out. So I'm gonna try it at 14. Looks okay. Now let's try both of them at the same temperature, topped up with a small amount of hot water. Okay, so now for the results. And by the way, I don't know which one is which. I've put a mark on the bottom of the cup that I used with the ground coffee, sorry, with the coffee that I ground, and the other one with the pre-ground coffee there's no mark on the bottom. So I'll taste them first. 
and then we'll see which one I preferred. So we'll go for this one. This one's way better. And this one is one that I've ground. And this one does taste way better. That tastes like a really, really nice espresso. This is good coffee. That's nice. This one that was pre-ground, the tastes, the flavours are just about there, but there's a sort of a taste there that shouldn't be there. As soon as I tasted this, I could tell it wasn't quite right. It's under extracted. There's just something not quite there. Yeah, so my opinion remains unchanged. I mean, the one made using pre-ground coffee still tastes good. I mean, it's still good coffee, but it's lacking. It's just not quite right. This one that I've ground using the Smart Grinder Pro. It tastes right. There's nothing about it that makes me wince. There's nothing unnatural about it. It tastes as I would expect it to. So as a result of this test, I stand by what I said, which is that the standard baskets are gonna give you much better results with a grinder than you're gonna get with dual wall or pressured baskets with pre-ground coffee. Being honest, the one made using the dual wall basket isn't terrible. It's not the worst coffee I've tasted and I wouldn't send it back if I ordered this at a cafe. I'd just think, mm, something not quite right, it's uh, not perfect, but you know, it's, it's drinkable, but that unmistakably is better. It tastes as I would expect it to taste, whereas this just isn't quite right. So definitely, if you can, I would say get yourself a grinder, use the standard baskets. If you can't, as I say, you're not going to get awful coffee with pre-ground, if you're buying decent pre-ground coffee, and the dual wall basket but it just isn't as good in my humble opinion as using a standard basket and using a grinder so there we go if you like this video if you found it useful please give me a thumbs up that would be very kind of you and there is a little round thing here that says subscribe or it's got a picture of coffee on it and if you click that you will subscribe to my channel so do that tatty bye now we'll work oh, for coffeeblog.co.uk Only breaks. <laughs>